So much yapping, Amanda. Hello everyone, it's Amanda. Welcome back to another plan with me. Let's not talk about the passage of time yet because I'm not ready for the conversation that it's already almost spring of 2024. Past month, I've been buried in 2025 doodle planner design mode. If you guys have been following me on social media, then you'll have seen that. Yes, I have already started to design the planner for next year, which is 2025. We pretty much start like almost a full eight to 10 months ahead of time. So that's why I've been very, very busy with not that much time to create content or post things so thank you guys for your patience the planner is looking extra good so far and I'm very proud of how it's turning out I can't wait for you guys to see it but I don't want to talk about it too much because basically you guys are gonna have to wait almost a year to see it I will say even the people who I work with who have seen every single planner so far they were like this year's themes are really good. There's no misses, Amanda, so. Anyway, in terms of life updates, that's what's been taking up my entire life for the past month or two. I've also been working on some other fun projects that I might talk a little bit about later in this video. I've been traveling a little bit, living life, and journaling, of course, which brings us into this month's spread for April. Like my bullet journal themes a lot of the times have like a cycle to them and I think around April is when I start doing the happier springy themes, of course, naturally because of the weather, it's getting sunnier and warmer. And for this month, I thought I would do a good old floral design. It's kind of been a while since I've done a classic springy floral design in my bullet journal. I mean, I know I did the Lunar New Year flowers but that does, those don't really count to me. Like I want like a full springtime floral design, you know, florals for spring, groundbreaking, that sort of thing. Hence the dress. I love this narrative over the past years of me just matching my entire life to whatever bullet journal theme I'm doing for that month, like my outfit, my hair, my nails, my phone case. Speaking of which guys, this month's theme was actually inspired by a new phone case I got recently from Casetify, this one right here. This is the 90s Daisy Impact MagSafe compatible phone case and I love case to buy cases. I've been using their cases for um, honestly probably like four or five years now so that's why I was really excited when they reached out to work with me for this video and of course first of all look at how cute this design is and that also reminds me of like flower market posters so I got a lot of inspiration from this but honestly I have so many different case to five phone case designs that I switch out depending on how I feel let me show you guys a couple of them um, I have these ones over here which I'll put like inserts of them on my phone it's just so fun to switch them out depending on your outfit or or your mood because I personally think of my phone case as an accessory now you know you're always holding your phone it's like literally in front of your outfit and especially me I'm always filming things or like taking mirror pictures and you want the vibes to go together right the cute design aside of course the most important part of a phone case is the protection aspect of it and I can tell you from first-hand account that case defy cases are so so good and protective I am notorious for dropping my phone sometimes I feel like I throw it by accident. I'm just so animated with talking with my hands as you can see and sometimes this thing just slips right out. It's so funny if you see me draw my phone. I'm so used to it now. I don't even get stressed out because I know that my case to five case can handle any of my drops or throws. Let me drop this right now and show you guys. We good. We good. <laughs> Since this case is MagSafe compatible, I've been loving using all of the Case Defy MagSafe accessories. My personal favorite is the ring stand. You can just pop this right on to the MagSafe case and then you can use it as a kickstand. Love that I can just take it off because before I would have those sticky adhesive ones and then it would like ruin your case. But I love that I can add this on. If I just want the case to show the design, we can do that. Anyway, if you guys want to try out Case Defy cases for yourself, which I highly recommend you do, again, take it from me, a certified phone dropper. You can go to casetify.com slash Amanda Rachley to check out my top picks. And thank you again to Case Defy for sponsoring this video and for inspiring this entire theme. Back to the spread and the theme for this month, you can see I really incorporated these sort of 
groovy, wavy florals that sort of puzzle piece in together. And I wanted it to not look too realistic, but not too cartoony as well. Um, so I kind of struck a balance between the two. And then in terms of the color palette, I was really inspired by the nails that I got recently. My nail girl always kills it. I always post these videos on social media of me getting nails to match my bullet journal. But for this particular month, I actually think the bullet journal theme was inspired by the nails a little bit. So basically I went to my nail girl and I was like, here's my phone case, here's this floral design that I have in mind. I showed her like a little quick sketch and also kind of explained the vibe of the month that I wanted. And she just sort of went to town with the color palette and the nails and they turned out so, so cute. I love the texture of them and um, I've been trying to go for a little bit shorter nails as well for springtime, a little bit fresher look. And I really liked the brighter color palette, like not too pastel, not too in your face. So those are the colors that I incorporated when I sat back down to film this April bullet journal setup. So I thought it was this kind of fun back and forth, like me bringing an idea to my nail girl, her executing it, and then me being inspired by the nails and the phone case. It was just a very fun, creative, inspiring month for me to set up. I did this cover page on stream with some of you guys who were there, and we were deciding between doing black outlines or colored outlines, like a darker version of whatever color that flower is, or using a brown fine liner for the outlines of the flowers. And we settled on the brown, which I'm really happy we did because it kind of added this softer vintage look. And the Twitch chat during the stream actually said it looked like a vintage flower market poster, which I loved. The brown definitely kind of added some warmth so that it's not too colorful and it definitely added um, some consistency throughout the design as well. So that's what I did to align it. I made some thick brown lines and the actual design itself was really easy to create because there really was no rhyme or reason to my design. I just kind of drew funky petal shapes, squished them in together, and it kind of grew together like a puzzle. And if there was ever an empty space, I would fill it in with a little flower or the leaves and not really worrying about making it look too realistic. Slowly, once I built that up, I left some space at the top for the lettering, which I also used this sort of serif curly font. The lettering style definitely kind of gives off the vintage flower market poster vibes as well. Honestly, I was just having fun with this theme and if you watch the stream, you'll know I didn't really think too much about the actual design and sketch it out, which I think is good. It kind of is, again, with my 2024 bullet journaling theme of ugly journaling, not worrying about making mistakes, kind of going with the flow a little bit more and seeing how things turn out, trusting the process. And we trusted the process for this one and I love the way it turned out. And I realized I was talking about the colors that I used. It was inspired by the nails and the colors were mostly this soft pink, purple, and then this muted blue. And then the I think the thing that brought it together was the greens that I used for the leaves and the stems as well as the yellow centers. So even though it looks colorful at first glance, I think the green and the brown and the yellow being that sort of consistent color throughout the entire design in the end really tied it all together and I just love how like warm and bright and springy and fresh that this design looks. I thought it was perfect for April. I also think that this theme would be very good in a doodle planner at some point. I don't know, you guys tell me because I'm currently designing the planner so your girl has power to do that, you know? On the other side of the cover page, I did a cute little quote page that says, let yourself bloom. I'm pretty sure I've used this quote before, but it was the first thing I thought of when I saw all of these flowers blooming off of my page. And then I just did some quick doodles of those florals around the quote, not too many. I didn't want to fill the page, but just something fun to match the cover page. As I mentioned, I was doing some of this spread on stream and I actually love Twitch streaming some of my setups while I'm filming these videos for you guys because a lot of you guys give me really good ideas that I would have never thought to do myself. I was so committed to this brown fine liner pen that I was using, which is the Copic Multi Liner in sepia and it's not the thickest fine liner so i was kind of going over some lines to make them a little bit thicker and then someone in my twitch chat was like amanda why don't you just use the brown zebra mild liner and at first i was like ah, the colors won't really match that well but then i used it and it was it was perfect i mean there's a slight color difference but 
especially for the parts that I have to have thicker outlines like the April lettering or um, the larger do doodles. So, so I kind of switched between the fine liner, the brown fine liner, and then the zebra brown mild liner, um, especially because there's the brush pen side and the bullet tip side, so I could fill it in really easily and that saved me so much time. So whoever suggested that, thank you. <laughs> my hand is forever owed to, to you. The next spread that I did was my monthly calendar and for this one, I really wanted to do a large calendar. And the reason for that is someone in my last video suggested that I use the monthly calendar as a habit tracker itself which I've never thought about doing, but I was like, wow, that's a really good idea and very efficient, especially because I've sort of been mentioning how tracking my habits and mood lately has been something that has fallen off the front of my mind, especially when I'm super busy with things like designing products for shop um, and I don't really have time to keep track of all these like mini calendar things. So I think using this one big monthly calendar, I put all my events and any appointments as usual, but then on the side, I actually created this legend of colors that um, one each color represents a different habit that I'm tracking. So like working out, taking my vitamins. Then on the actual monthly calendar spread, I just create a little dot of color whenever I do that particular habit. And I don't know why I never thought of doing this, but it's really smart, I think. I'll see how it works out for me this month, but hopefully it helps. I just kind of like the idea of having everything on this one page. The actual spread itself, since the calendar boxes were so big, it took up most of the page and then in the empty spaces above and below, I just recreated the April title. And then I just added some of those floral and leaf designs to fill up the space. I like starting out with those bigger daisy-like floral designs, the ones that are similar to the phone case because those take up the most space and then I'll fill it in with the leaves or stems in the smaller areas and it sort of builds up like that. But again, this theme in itself was relatively quick to create and I think it's pretty foolproof as well. The next spread that I did was a mood tracker and I know I just talked about how tracking has been something that I've been falling off on lately but I wanted to retry this month because I had a really cute idea for a mood tracker and I honestly think that this month was meant for this type of mood tracker. So I created a floral design and I made sure to count out the number of petals to match the number of days in April and I will be coloring in the petals of the flowers depending on my mood. So I've assigned different colors for different moods, which I forgot to do on camera, but trust me, I did it at the bottom later. I numbered them off. And then as the months go on, the colors of the flowers will slowly be filled in. And I think it'll be nice to see this like floral design come to life as I go along this month. Very cute and spring-like in my opinion, so that will be really fun for me to do. On the page next to it, I created this spread that has sections for me to keep track of some different things that I've been working on lately. First of which at the top is Go Wild, and Go Wild is a planner conference that I'm actually going to in April this month, and it's in Texas, so if any of you guys are going, we will be going. Shop ARL will also be vending there, so that's our first time selling products in like a physical space, a physical booth. We've never really done tabling before at conventions or art fairs or anything, so I'm very excited for that. And I might be doing a little talk or workshop. Martha Stewart's gonna be there, so I'm very excited to meet the queen of crafting. Um, and yeah, I've never been to a really big planner convention like this, so I'm kind of nervous, but it should be very fun. The next little project box underneath it is for the tote bag and undated lawn which is very exciting. I have been cooking this up for a while now. A lot of you guys have been seeing sneak peeks here and there and have been asking me about tote bag restocks, but we're actually releasing new designs. So that is coming very soon. Undated planners is also coming very soon. I'm hoping by spring. So 
that is very exciting keep your eye out finally i'm doing the weekly spread page and this is a layout that i've been doing for the past couple of months for 2024 really been loving it if you haven't seen any of my 2024 bullet journal videos then this is the layout that i've been doing it's not like a full double page spread um, anymore just because i don't need that much planning space currently a lot of things that i've been doing when i need more detail have just been on notion or on my ipad but in general i still like having like an analog place to write down thoughts so i have a little weekly calendar box at the top where i just put any events and appointments or due dates and things like that i have a to-do list that's just rolling for the week and if i want to ass assign specific to-do list tasks to days then i'll just put it in the weekly box above and this just works out for me in terms of my life right now because most of my to-do list tasks are not specific to one day it's kind of like things that i'll be working on for multiple days or they'll roll over to another day I didn't do it for this particular month, but sometimes I'll do a check-in spread next to it where I just ha treat it like a journal or diary entry and that's where I'll put my thoughts about the week. So that's what I've been doing lately and it's been really working out for me and it's really, really quick for me to set up, which has been very important in this time of my life where I seem to be running out of time constantly. <laughs> Alright guys, so here is the final flip through of my April 2024 bullet journal setup. I hope you guys like the spring florals. I think this just screams spring to me and I love it. But of course, I wanted to showcase some of your recreations from last month, which was a fun one with the chrome. I also wanted to showcase your doodle planner spreads from last month as well. It's my favorite thing to see and specifically last month, the succulent theme was really cute. Like. People were coloring it in with shading and it looked so, so good. And it made my heart so warm to see you guys put my baby to use and color in the doodle planner, especially as I'm currently designing the 2025 planner. It, it's been a very good source of motivation and inspiration for me. So thank you guys so much for all the love. Anyway, I feel like I've been yapping a lot as usual, so I will let you guys go. I hope you guys have a great April treat this as a spring cleaning reset so if you did not feel too good for q1 then q2 we got this keep doodling bye